All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. We got a lot to do today. We're gonna to try to finally demystify all of these numbers that you get with TBS Crossfire, whether it's RSSI, link quality, SNR, all of that stuff, what's important, who's it important for, and everything else. So let's get started. Upcoming videos, we're gonna put the Nano Diversity inside here, first diversity receiver I ever had. We're gonna get it mounted up, run it with the Tango 2, see how far we can get, watch our numbers from this video, all that kind of stuff. I got an extended Immortal T right here to put up front. We might do some different orientation. We'll see what's going on. Also, more tracks and stuff, more FPV crawler stuff and everything else. So I'm taking all the information that I have compiled from the years of experience that I have working with Crossfire, asking all the questions, reading the manual and everything else like that. Now, when you talk to different people, everybody's gonna e explain RSSI link quality and everything differently, but there's only one true way, and that is from the manual or from Trappy himself, who recently gave some pretty good comments on that stuff. So let's get a couple quick things out of the way. When we talk about, let's look at the TBS Tango here. This thing will run up to 250 milliwatts of power. The full-size Crossfire can run up to two watts of power. Now, what I like to do consistently for a long range, mid range type of stuff, even racing, whatever what people will do, you can run the dynamic power, but I just like to set my power at a cap. On this one, it's gonna be 250 milliwatts. So that way, all the data that we're gonna talk about here is consistent. If you use dynamic power, this stuff is going to change as your power level scales up. So if you want consistent results, set your power, on a fixed cap at like 500 or one watt if you have the big one or 250 milliwatts on this one. And that way you can be sure of your results. So we're gonna draw this out on the bench here and then we will actually take a look at how this works in flight and everything like that. So up here at the top, you have your transmit power. So 250 milliwatts on the Tango and I set it to a fixed. So that way, everything else below here is all gonna be consistent and it's not gonna change on us as this would scale up in power. So then over here, we have link quality, we have RSSI, and then of course we have the SNR. So your link quality is gonna start at 300 and go all the way down to zero. And right about here at 100 in beta flight, you are going to hit a 50 Hertz mode, which is your slowest, most latent crossfire feel that you're gonna get. Still faster or about as fast as S-Bus, but if you're a racer, you don't want this. You wanna stay in this 300 as close as you can because this is 150 hertz. So this is the super fast stuff that's going on right here. The RSSI, as we talked about, will go from a high point of minus one dB all the way down to minus 130 dB. So as this goes down, we're getting less and less signal here, and you will see these two work with each other. So the lower this goes, the lower this goes. But the important thing to remember is that you're always going to be able to outfly what this is saying based on your link quality. And the reason why is SNR. So what this does is it's taking this data and it's measuring it against the noise floor, which we can't see unless you have the big crossfire and you turn it around and you look at the spectrum analyzer. This is gonna go from 60 to minus six. So right here at zero, that's kind of your danger zone. Then you'll see on my flight here, I had six down in the 12s. With each six dB that you go, TBS claims that you can still fly at two times your range. They also say the same thing over here, that for every six dB you go down, you can still fly two times the range. But this number here is a better bet 
because it is taking all of this information and putting it into here. So if we're a couple kilometers out, we've already dropped to mode one. So we're flying with a little bit more latency, which isn't a big deal. We're flying long range, we're not hitting gates. Our RSSI is all the way going down as well. So this is constantly working and taking that information, putting it against the noise floor that you and your quad are seeing, and it's giving you an example of how much further you can fly. So SNR really is the true number to find out what we can do for maximum distance. But SNR is something that is not displayed on most OSDs. Only in the Radix, as far as I know right now. Now you can set up an audible alert or a telemetry screen on your Crossfire to tell you what your SNR is. I highly suggest that anyway. I also highly suggest looking at RSSI. RSSI has been a big help for me when it comes to troubleshooting. I fly pretty much the same pattern at my house all the time whenever I do my testing and stuff. If I notice that I get a premature RSSI or a premature jump from mode two to mode one, then chances are I might have an issue going on with my antennas. More than once, maybe two or three times, I have found UFL connectors that have popped off and I never would have known because I'm still getting a great link quality because I'm putting out 250 milliwatts. My SNR I can't see and I might not have turned audible alerts on, but typically if I was seeing a negative 40 in RSSI, all of a sudden I was getting like a minus 80 and that was because of the broken antenna. So now let's take a look at one of the flights here that we did during our long range testing with this and we'll show you exactly what all this data looks like when it is coming across our screen. And I know some of you have asked me to do uh, how to set up audible alerts and stuff like that on the Tango. Um, I can eventually, but honestly, it's hard to see this screen and it's hard to record it. Uh, the frame rate on it and like the cameras just sometimes are really hard to match up. There's plenty of videos out there on how to set that stuff up. I recommend going and checking out one of Painless uh, 360 videos. Lee's done so much good work on OpenTX that he really deserves the credit for all of it. He gives you good information and explains it perfectly. So go and check out Painless 360's channel if you want to see how to do all that. It's the exact same on a Tyrannus as it is here. It just looks a little bit different with the buttons. So here's our flight that we had the other day. And if you take a look here, we are almost at our kilometer. We have a 100 in our SI, where we actually started at 300. So we are in our higher latency mode because we just don't have enough power to transmit back to keep us in the 150 hertz super crossfire mode, which we don't need. We're flying in a straight line here at like, what, 150 feet or something like that. So we don't need it. We can see that we are transmitting at 250 milliwatts. Our RSSI is at minus 80, and our signal to noise ratio is at 20 dB. So I could keep on flying here. For my testing purposes, I only went out to a kilometer, but you know, I could have kept flying a long way. And if you see, these numbers just consistently change all the time. And this is another thing to think about here as well, is that I'm using a vertical orientation on the antenna. And this gets, this works out for you most of the time, but sometimes it could end up biting you just because if you look at the turn there and watch what happens to all of the different power levels, they're pretty consistent. Before we start turning, we're at minus 81 and around 19 dB. Now you can see the drop to 11 dB, 8 dB, 13. And on the way home, you can see everything start to come back up. But you do see that 
for a little bit of time, our RSSI was actually falling a little bit more because everything was being blocked by the actual aircraft itself. And that's why I have a, another way to set up my antennas, definitely all at, off of uh, my testing that I did again in the second video, which I'll put a link up in the corner here if you wanna look at that. And that will show you what I was getting on that flight one after I went through and changed that. So if we skip forward here and look at flight one during this test, and this was the one with the fail safe and the bad antenna. So the flight one algorithm was kind of goofy because right here, it says that I am at 100%. There's all, their link quality only goes to 100 like beta flights used to. But my transmitter was telling me that I had already went to mode one, not mode two. So this is not true. My link quality is actually lower than what it is. And you'll see it kind of start bobbing and changing and stuff here. But remember, I had all of the actual stuff turned on for the audio it's because you just can't see all of it in flight one. So you'll see here the link quality dipped down to 50. The RSSI on my radio was saying that I was at like 100 or something and I wasn't paying attention to SNR. And then, of course, we had the fail safe. And then when I ran it in the new orientation with the antenna mounted on, on the arm, everything was just beautiful and didn't have a problem. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's a, as easy as I can explain it. If you're a racer, really, you just want to focus on the link quality number and the 150 hertz. If you're a long range person, then you definitely want to look at more data and take more of it into consideration. The SNR is going to tell you how much further you can go in a real world. The stuff can change a lot. Your environment, weather, trees, all that stuff can affect all of your, your noise floor and your signal to noise ratio and bring that number down. But it does seem to drop down nice and consistent from all of my experiences thus far. And I think from now on, that's pretty much the, the main number that I'm going to just pay attention to because I don't race. When I'm freestyling 90% of the times, I cannot tell that I go from 150 to 50 hertz mode unless I'm really in the zone and I've flown like three or four packs and all that kind of stuff. So it's just not a big deal. Anyway, I hope this helps you guys out. If you have any questions, please let me know. And don't forget to like or dislike and subscribe to the channel. Drop a comment below, help the discussion. And I hope this really helped out a lot of you guys that are new and getting into Crossfire because it really will change the way you fly. It's great stuff. Later.